This is what happens when you don't use keyword clustering. It's a mess, disaster, and a complete waste of your time. If you ever wondered how websites rank for completely irrelevant terms, this is how. It's a case of bad SEO, keyword chaos, and possibly sleep deprivation. Keyword cannibalization sounds dramatic, right? That's because it is. If you create multiple pages of content on your website targeting the same search intent, Google gets confused. It doesn't know which to pick and which to rank for that term. And then it basically means none of them are gonna rank very well. Instead of writing 47 pages of different content targeting the same thing, you can do a fancy thing called keyword clustering, which basically means Google, please rank my content for multiple different keywords instead of just one. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do it for free with answersocrates.com. You don't have to spend manual time, 50 hours plus in a spreadsheet trying to filter this all yourself or using ChatGPT when it can manually cluster or scrape the SERPs to put these clusters in correctly. And as a bonus in the later on in the video, I'm gonna show you if you've got any current keyword cannibalization issues with your website now, which is holding it back from ranking. All right guys, let's jump into how to do keyword clustering right and fix your SEO. Here's a problem. Google doesn't like it when you write multiple pieces of content targeting the same thing. It wastes your time, it costs you money, and it confuses Google of what article it should rank, especially now with a recent helpful content update where content bloat is a big thing. Google's trying to stop the use of massive, uh, mass-produced AI content on the web. And just to go over it one more time, so basically what it does is group similar keywords together, targeting the same thing, which is generally based on the SERP analysis or semantic related keywords. And basically you check a keyword and see if the search results are the same. And you do that for multiple keywords and that sees if the keywords are gonna be clustered together or not. So it's based on Google and it's based on semantics depending on which clustering tool you are using. Well, here's the thing not too many people talk about. This is where SEO beats ads 10X. Basically, when you are doing ad bidding, you are bidding on one search term, which could cost you five to $500 just for per click, but that is just on one search term. It doesn't get all the LSIs or semantically related keywords. With SEO, if you're writing a full, fully optimized article with keyword clustering, you are gonna target all these different LSIs and rank for all these different terms, increasing the overall search volume of that article, beating out ads 10 times, as well as making more money for your website and getting more traffic. Plus, you never wanna go after 10,000 different keywords, write hundreds of different articles targeting in the same topic. And worst of all, doing this, Google is probably going to ignore your website entirely if you do that strategy. So back in the day, keyword clustering was done by SEOs in a very manual process. It was manual clustering. And basically, you used to have to get a spreadsheet out and spend about 50 hours just grouping keywords together. And this was generally eyeballing it or manually checking the SERPs each time. It used to take absolutely forever and you used to question your career choices. But luckily, there is a new way now. Now you can use AI powered clustering tools because life is short and we don't want to waste time on these spreadsheets. And the good thing about these is they go off the real search intent rather than just vibes. Okay, let's cover some different tools which you can use right now for keyword clustering. Ahrefs is like a date which is perfect on paper until you realize they charge you to breathe and you just started liking them. Semrush is like a data nerd. It knows every detail about your ex's history, but somehow they still want you to pay for dinner. Swipe left. AnswerSocrates.com doesn't let you drown in data, it doesn't force you to export everything, and it doesn't make you question your life choices about seeing the bill. Unlike Ahrefs, it won't charge you for making eye contact, and unlike SEMrush, it doesn't look like a Wall Street Journal's trading platform. It helps you find real questions, clusters keywords instantly, and it makes the whole process not feel like a full-time job. You can try for free, and you don't have to spend $300 for a dinner date just to give it a go. The easiest way to cluster keywords. Step one is to gather your keywords. So using tools like Answer Socrates, Ahrefs, or whatever your personal favorite favorite is at stealing keywords from your competitors. What you want to do is get your list of keywords either straight from antisocrates.com or from a CSV export from whatever tool you are using. Step two is to cluster the keywords and check the search intent. Basically, we want to see if the results for the different keywords are completely different or if they've got the same results. If they've got the same results, then those keywords are going to be clustered together. If totally different results show up, that means those keywords are not clustered together. So you wanna to write two separate articles. Easy process. What to do after clustering. Okay, so you have your clustered content. Now, what do you do? 
Step one is to choose the primary keyword. This is going to be the primary keyword for the heading of the title and in the title tag of your content. Basically, it's generally the one with the most search volume. And to Socrates in the spreadsheet, it does it automatically. It'll put this at the top. I will show you now where it is. And step two is to structure your content around that topical cluster. So you can put these additional keywords into subheadings or into the content. This generally depends on personal preference. If the the um, the text is very close to the main keyword. I generally like to keep that in, inside the content and not actually in the headings, but this is personal preference and it does depend what you're after. If the keyword is slightly different and a bit more of a, a variation, different intent, then I definitely add this as a heading instead of in the content. But if it's very similar to the main uh, keyword in the heading, I generally like to add that inside the content rather than in H2s or H3s. And doing this method basically lets you rank for multiple different search terms. It makes the content a lot more optimized for Google search engines, and it answers a lot more queries around that topic which Google wants to see. Step three is actually adding internal links Links. This is very, very important for SEO. I love internal linking more than actually adding backlinks on the site. You have more control over the on page than what off page is. So in my opinion, the internal linking has a higher factor than backlinks, depending on obviously the site and the niche and everything like that. But you have more control over internal linking. So it is very, very important to do. So what you want to be doing is I will do a new video on this and actually put it up here because you can do it. This can be an hour long video just in itself. But what I like to do is basically do a reverse silo structure. So we link up to the next article above it. So if it's a category page, link up to the category. And then everything in the category will be linking to those blog posts anyway. Uh, you can obviously change this depending on the structure of your website. So generally, the bigger pillar pieces of content will be the articles above. And then all the uh, supporting articles are below. And they would all link to the main piece of content. There's hub and spoke models. There's so many different ways to do it. But the key important thing is to just add a few internal links in. So common keyword clustering mistakes. Mistake one is grouping based on words and not actually on intent. For example, cloud hosting versus best hosting for agencies. They look very, very similar, but these are completely different needs. These are completely different articles. Based on intent, these don't match at all. But if you just group them based on keywords, like what ChatGPT would do, they would put these articles together and it doesn't match at all. Mistake two is not checking search volume. So some keywords actually have zero search volume and most of the time you are wasting your time. I personally used to love zero search volume terms. I used to go for them all the time. But if you are clustering multiple keywords together and they all have zero search volume, I would 100% consider leaving this article out. This is obviously personal preference, but now with content blow, which I've covered before, trying to write multiple articles with zero search volume, especially if all the other keywords in that cluster have zero search volume, it might not be worth doing. This is personal preference, but in my opinion, it is not worth doing anymore. Uh, mistake three is not adding internal links properly. So as discussed before, you want to be adding internal links into your clustered content. So be linking your pillar piece of content, your supporting articles, link everything together in the clusters, and this will help you rank for a lot more keywords. It basically passes the link juice around the website. It helps a user discover other articles which are relevant to that search term, uh, and it keeps them on your page. It's overall really, really good. Now your site might be suffering from keyword cannibalization. The good news is you can use Google Search Console to tell you if anything's wrong. Also, I am actually building a tool around this topic. It might be ready, so check the description for this keyword cannibalization tool. Okay, so how to check keyword cannibalization in Google Search Console. Head over to Google Search Console, click Performance, and then Search Results. Set the date range, so you can change this to three to six months to analyze the keyword history for your, uh, analyze the keyword and page performance. Generally, I like to set this uh, the longest time possible, but you can play around with the date to how you want it. And then when you've found the specific keyword, you can filter the results to see which pages rank for it. Check how many pages are ranking. So scroll down and see how many different URLs appear for that keyword. If two or more pages from your site are competing for the same term, that is keyword cannibalization and your website is suffering from it. So as we can tell, like this process on Google Search Console, it definitely works, but it is a bit time consuming and you have to know the keywords, which is a shame. This is why I'm building the tool, which I mentioned before. So 
make sure you do sign up in the description below and it will help this process even more. So we wanna check these pages out. We wanna be looking at impressions and clicks. If a page has high impressions but low clicks, Google might be confused with which page it's trying to show. If you have pages that are ranking but none of them are in the top three, that is a big, big red flag. So option one, you can merge these pieces of content. If they both cover a similar topic, you can combine them to make one strong piece of article. Option two is to use canonical tags. So if you've got one page which is more important, add a canonical tag to tell Google to prioritize one page over the other. Option three is to do internal linking. So you can use internal links to signal that one page should be uh, ranked higher than the other. Generally, you wanna be doing the anchor text as the keyword which you're trying to rank for, linking from one one page to the other page. This will tell Google this is the page you want to rank for that specific keyword. Option four is to no index or redirect the page. So if the page isn't needed, you can redirect it or you can add a no index to that page to stop it from ranking. And option five is de-optimize de the page you don't want to rank for that keyword. So generally when I get these issues and if it is something which is um, vastly different, like it shouldn't be ranking for this keyword at all, it should be another page. I generally do option five, de-optimize the page for that keyword, try and remove the mentions, uh, anything relevant from that keyword. And then I do option three, which is internal link into the actual page I want to rank for the keyword. And generally that fixes the problem for me. It just depends how uh, big the issue is to what option you want to try. But if you are doing SEO by yourself, please make sure you you uh, know what you're doing if you're going to no index or redirect pages or anything like that if you start deleting content. Generally, you want to try and fix this rather than deleting pages. Also, you can do this method without Google Search Console. So you can use the site operator site and then yourdomain.com and then the keyword. And then you can see what pages are ranking together for that specific term. So you can see what keywords are actually ranking in Google for that keyword. Uh, and this isn't a perfect method, but it generally helps you try and find out which pages are trying to compete for specific keywords. I wouldn't do this option for trying to de-optimize or get rid of pieces of content, this method, but it might help find um, multiple articles and give point you in the right direction of any keyword cannibalization issues. All right, let's recap in case you wasn't listening. Use keyword clustering so Google doesn't ignore half of your pages. Group keywords together based on the SERPs and search intent. Don't group keywords together because they look very similar. Use AnswerSocrates.com unless you like suffering or paying for very expensive tools. Write smarter, not more content. Internally link these pieces of content together like a pro. And congratulations for watching this video. You know more about keyword clustering than 99% of people on the internet. Now, if you want to make your SEO easier, go to AnswerSocrates.com, try keyword clustering for free, and try all the other features and tools on the actual software. And if you like this video and learned something today, like and subscribe, or don't. I'm not your dad. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.